Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Bay, and this is XOXO Bay. You guys, it is the crack of dawn. Today's the day. Today is my reconstructive breast surgery, so I am about to get dressed, y'all. I am thirsty. I am thirsty when I say I'm a water drinker. I'm a water guzzler. I'm a water drinker. And I hate the fact that like when you have surgeries that you are not allowed to drink water like after midnight. Like you have to drink and eat before midnight. Y'all, I am thirsty. Like I am thirsty. Um, my son's grandmother, she's going to be taking me to my surgery. My surgery is in Nashville. Um, it's not much that I have to do right now because I only got like not too much time before she come and pick me up because we're trying to beat the morning rush. Plus it takes about 45 minutes to get to Nashville from where, um, from where I live. So I do have my bra, I still have my bra from when I had my breast reduction last year. And so I have the bra right here and then I have my um, front opening t-shirt that I'm going to wear with the buttons and stuff on it. If you are new here, this is the first time you're ever watching a video. You guys, I did have a breast reduction. I had a breast reduction July 26. I had a breast reduction July 26 of last year. And then on August 31st of Lem. Hold on, guys. I'm watching Harry Potter because it soothes me. While I'm talking to you guys, let me just get dressed while I'm talking to you. On July 26th of last year, I had a breast reduction. So I am prior military. Um, unfortunately, I had an accident um, where it caused nerve damage in my neck. And so with my breasts being as extremely heavy and as extremely big as they were, I needed a breast reduction in order to alleviate the pain of my breast pulling on my bra and pulling on my shoulder which is pulling on the nerve and causing severe pain in my neck so they recommended a breast reduction of course insurance paid for everything and so i got a breast reduction i was a what was i you guys i was like a 30 no i actually was not in my 30s i was actually in my 40s i'm in my 30s now i was a 42 or 44 42 or 44 a b c d e i was like an e because i surpassed a triple d so like an e my, my breasts were huge i'm gonna see if i can insert i'm gonna insert a video of myself plus i was i was actually way bigger in size as well but i'm gonna insert a video of me um, on my 30th birthday trip before my surgery, I went to Jamaica and I'm going to insert a video of me in a swimsuit so you guys can see how big those knockers were. Wow. Black bean is really good, honestly. So now that y'all out, now that y'all see how big my breasts were, yes, that's how big my breasts were. And then now my breasts are pretty small. Now I am in the C's and I'm like, I believe I'm 34C, which I'm so happy about. Um, but unfortunately, something happened. I was one of those people that experienced a complication. It is what it is. Sad to say, broke my little heart. Um, but I experienced a complication. A complication that um, changed my life, changed the trajectory of my life. It's still impacting and changing my life today. I experienced necrosis um and if you guys don't know what necrosis is i'll go ahead and put a definition on the screen oh can i put on deodorant they usually say no deodorant they usually say no deodorant so we're just gonna put on some spray deodorant easier to clean this off the actual deodorant but my nerves is bad and i'm y'all my nerves is bad but um yes that's what necrosis is and i experienced that in my breast and so um it's something that i could have died from i'm just so thankful by the grace of god that my um, in-home nurse was able to 
spot that when she came and she acted accordingly and she did her due diligence and I had to rush back to my surgeon to have like a emergency appointment and unfortunately I had to get all of that cut out I had to get a big piece of my breast cut out um, which caused me excruciating pain because he did it right there in the doctor's office like I wasn't numb or anything because after the breast reduction you know I clearly didn't have I still didn't have like any feeling or anything in my breast so um I didn't have like any feeling or anything in my breast I gotta remove all of this I don't never take off my E my E is for my son but I have to take off all my jewelry <sighs> but yes um when that happened I experienced crippling anxiety just to have to see it just to have to see it I, I heard the cuts I heard everything like my surgeon just was not a, a good communicator in the way that it happened he just told me to lay down and I thought he was looking at it but because I was numb I did not know cutting was occurring okay I was not told a step by step of what was going to happen or what was happening to me I noticed that cutting was being done afterwards I could look down at my breast and I really didn't want to and I was in there like boohoo crying because I can hear it I can hear my insides and then I can hear the snipping so I knew that something was being cut and when I looked down at my breast I did see a hole and I just seen like the cusp of the hole that's how deep I knew it was the word is hollow right that's how deep I and hollow I knew that it was and so with that being said I ended up having my in-home nurse now she would come three times a week I would have to clean it twice a day it was just very very traumatic and so they did everything that they could well she did because she is the, she's the best ever still in contact with her and she did everything that she could to nurse me back to help she was on call anytime I needed to call her she would stop by she would help me out you guys, I literally have footage of the first time I've I seen it. When the first, because he asked, he was like, I need you to look at it because I need you to know how to clean it. And I just could not look at it. Like my nerves is bad right now that I'm like fiddling with my hands, but I do need to finish getting dressed. Um, and I will tell this story in another video. Like I will tell this story in a full video um, eventually, but just wanted to tell you guys why I'm getting the reconstructive surgery so when everything healed every and everything in my skin merged and it closed the way it did it did not of course it's, it's not perfect it's not perfect so I'm having a reconstructive breast surgery so that we can get my breast looking normal I did before I did move down here to Tennessee um, before I left my doctor once everything like closed up and I did get um, tattooing my first tattoo <laughs> that's crazy my first tattoo was my nipples <laughs> but I did get tattooing but because they're gonna do this surgery again I'm just um, after that I'm gonna have another appointment we're gonna get another um, layer of tattooing and this time I do have a female surgeon which I feel a lot more comfortable in because I know she can she knows how much it's important to us to to feel like women, to try our best to feel like women. And I'm just so happy and so thankful that my nurse caught it when she did because the necrosis was on this side, which is above the heart. And if she didn't look, if she didn't pay attention, if she didn't care about her job, eventually by that weekend, it could have, it could have caught to me. It could have got to my heart. It could have killed me. It could have killed me or I could have lost way more than what I thought I, than what I did lose. And um, I could possibly have nothing. Like I could possibly have nothing at all. So um, I am just thankful and grateful. And today I'm very, very nervous. Friday I had a pre-op appointment. They was told I was told to stop taking like you know medication. I can't drink no herbal teas. Y'all I've been anxious all weekend. I've been anxious all weekend. Today is a Tuesday. I've been anxious all weekend. Like all weekend my mouth is dry can't drink no water it's just my nerves is really bad but i check in at 6 a.m it is 0 4 21 but i do need to wash my face and brush my teeth because this is the only amount of water that my mouth is going to touch and like i'm they gonna have to do something y'all have to give me some ice shit or something y'all gonna have to calm my nerves i really want to cry right now but i'm at a point where i'm tired of crying on youtube <laughs> but you know what i'm in my healing journey and that's what happens when you're on your healing journey plus this is something that's really 
this is something that's traumatic like people don't understand like unless somebody that's going to recommend a breast reduction try to scare somebody out of a breast reduction I don't know because everybody is different but I do want to be that person that lets you know that there are complications and they may you you may get the complication waiver and you may accept and sign like we all do we read the complications we never think that it could be yes but it was me it was me it was me I'm somebody now that like I really can't look at myself naked I definitely don't want nobody else to look at me naked. I don't have to explain it and stuff. It's just a lot. But when I went for my appointment with my surgeon, my new surgeon, she was just like so. She gave me time. It took me a long time for her, long time for me to show her my breasts. I think I cried in that out in that office for like forty five minutes and stuff like that. And then also too, with my incisions from my my incisions actually like healed really well. It's just like on this side, it's kind of keloid in. Like I hope I can show you guys later, but it's kind of so she's also gonna put like do some shots, some like injections in there that one or two things, um it, it can go down like it can diminish in color, it can like fade away or it can get really really light. She said, but it is to to smooth that bulging out so that I don't have that bulging anymore. Um, I'm just gonna be happy to for me to feel whole again, like. I know there are certain qualities that we have that make that make us feel like women. Having a vagina, having breasts, having a period, getting pregnant. There's just things like that that make us feel like women. And when sometimes when you can't do those things, you don't feel like a woman like me i was told i could never have kids because i suffered from pcos and then i got pregnant with my lucky baby but at that time i was just like dang am i even really a woman i can't even i can't even contribute to this world you know or you have women that may have breast cancer that um can possibly have a kid but it can't breastfeed they they might have gotten like a full uh, mastectomy and they can't breastfeed they don't have no breasts and stuff like that or yeah but just women who can't breastfeed a lot of women don't feel like mothers because they can't feed their their kids but there's a lot of things and a lot of moving parts where the parts of our bodies that make us women when we cannot use those to what we're supposed to use those for we no longer feel like a woman so i'm excited to feel like a woman like I cannot wait to tell y'all this story like the whole story the video clips I have it I have it all documented it's, it's on my hard drive and everything uh, it's gonna be a hard video to put together but I'm also not putting it together until I am completely done with this because even though this surgery is not like as severe as a breast reduction it's still a surgery I still got to go under like you know it is what it is I'm not gonna fully be okay until I have my last tattooing session and that's it and it's up from there like you know when I'm in a calmer safer place but I develop crippling anxiety from having this having to see the inside of that um I have a charm on my Pandora bracelet, a RN charm. I got accepted into nursing school last year. I was so happy. My budgeting channel was praying for me. I was studying. They bought me nursing uh, supplies and everything. I was supposed to start nursing school September 1st. I caught necrosis in my breast August 31st. I did not attend nursing school. After seeing that, after being traumatized by that, I and, and being diagnosed, with crippling anxiety like two weeks later because of how bad it was i did not attend nursing school so my life definitely changed my goals definitely shifted and everything but yeah y'all sorry for the spiel i know it's been like 14 15 minutes but let me finish getting dressed and then i'm either gonna talk to y'all from the car or i might not because i'm gonna be in the car with my son's grandmother but i'm definitely taking you guys with me to the hospital and everything so i will call you back later okay so i am ready to go i have on my little you know open face shirt i have on some sweats i have on some crops i am bringing my never full um 
for my purse i have like my ipad my ipad in here i am like on the last day of my period so hopefully that doesn't affect like my affect my blood too much um, i also went outside to take the trash out and it is in fact raining and if you guys are new to this channel usually when i have to do stuff i have a job interview i have an appointment to go to it's something that i'm nervous about it just starts raining out of the blue and for me to walk outside to take the trash out and it is raining it just lets me know that god is here he's with me like i feel like that's my reassurance that he is with me it always starts raining y'all like it literally always starts raining so i feel like he is here with me because knowing that all i can do is pray as far as when it comes to my anxiety because i can't take nothing having taken anything since friday so my nerves is bad but like i said i got my ipad and stuff in here of course i'm taking you guys with me i have my phone um, I do in my other bag, of course, I have like stuff to wash up with a change of clothes and everything. But usually with these kind of appointments, you don't have to bring too much because they provide everything. So I'm just trying to feel as light and as easy as possible. My ride is on the way. Um, I was just double backing in my house, making sure that my house is clean and straightened up for when I do get back home. But yes, I hope you guys are enjoying this video so far. And I hope you guys stay along for my journey for my reconstructive surgery. Hopefully, I'm able to get some footage of me in my, like, my hospital room. Um, get some footage of the doctor explaining everything that's going to happen to me. And if I don't, if I don't feel comfortable, comfortable, if I want this to just be intimate, I can't just, you know, talk about what happened, what it is that she said, everything that's going on, and just keep you guys updated. But y'all, uh, it's been a long road. It's been a long road. August 31st of this year made a year since my incident with my breast. And so I'm just ready to feel normal and to be back to myself, even though, you know, the breast does not make you who you are. But as somebody who had breast all her life, to be without something you've had all your life can truly change you. It can. But yes, you guys, um, I'm going to call you guys back when... I get to Nashville. She moved out of state and shit that went left. She's seeking forgiveness. She is deaf and she want to and start up a business. The daddy is not around. My mama is not around. I watch her climb on the top of the pole and then get sliding down. I make it rain in this bitch. I make it snow in this bitch. She's trying to get out of the mix. Shotty is going to J. Shotty is going to J. He I'm supporting this shit. This is a story to take my life and I'm just recording this shit I'ma just give it to you direct instead of me blowing this shit You know you important this shit, you know I'm supporting this shit We used to do pornos when you would come over, but now you got morals and shit I got like four on the wrist and an adorable kid I got a Drake in the studio and I don't just mean that I'm in this bitch Please make the most of this shit, don't just come close to some shit I give you this bread, you run me some head and then you go blow up a bit so I am currently in the bathroom. I'm about to do a urine sample to make sure that I'm not pregnant, which I know I'm not, but they need a urine sample. So I made it to where my bed and stuff is gonna be. And I'm nervous, I ain't gonna hold you, I'm nervous. I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm so nervous. But um, look at me, I'm trying to find somewhere to hang my purse because y'all know we don't put our purse on the floor. I was always taught that you lose money if you put your purse on the floor. But yeah, let me go ahead and give them their urine samples so I can get back and um, change out of my clothes into my gown. She is dance but she want to and start up a business. The daddy is not around. My mama is not around. I watch her climb on the top of the pole and then get sick. I make it rain in this bitch. I make it snow in this bitch. She's trying to get out of the mix. Shawty is going legit. Shawty is going legit. Me, I'm supporting this shit. This is a story. Pay for my life. I'm not supporting this shit. Daddy's not around. Mama's definitely not around. She got a business plan, but she just ain't had time to ride it down. Stay with the sister now. Oh, the end. Hey, y'all. I'm about to do my three hour surgery. Oh, you can't really hear me, but I'm done. I'm um, waking up out of anesthesia. Got my bra and stuff on. Oh, yeah, I'm about to go home. I will call you guys back later. 
Hey y'all, I am home. As y'all can see, my eyes are still low. Um, they encouraged me to eat me some soup. So uh, my son's grandmother, she took me to Panera. So I got a soup and a salad because they said usually after anesthesia, you start feeling sick. I have this nausea sickness pouch thingy on my, oh shoot, I gotta wipe my, wash my hands um, on the back of my neck. Um, on the back of my neck he tried to give me a um iv right here but my vein was too short the needle was too long and so i'm gonna have a bruise because of that i bruise easily this is where i had the iv at um got my meds got my painkillers got everything i'm supposed to do I have to keep this on for three weeks. I can't shower for the next three days. Um, so I'm gonna kind of probably be washing up in the sink, be knowing that I'm not gonna, if I try to take a bath, I'm not gonna be able to push myself up out the tub. Like if I try to just take a bath, like bath, like bathe my lower half, I'm not gonna be able to push myself up out of the tub. And then I don't have, for some of my reason they say, we can't remove our what's the thing called we can't remove our shower head so i don't have like the detachable one where if i was to just sit or stand i could just do that yeah my eyes is my eyes are heavy i'm about to drink my first drink of the day i am back home it is 11 30. i left the house at basically 04 45 i'm back I am about to try to attempt to eat this soup because I can't take nothing unless I eat. So, I have. Oh, okay. And I think I'm bleeding some, but I have my thing on. I actually think I'm, oh, you can actually see the, the bandage on them. This one is a little more poofy and puffy. I'm gonna take my time because, um, and this is what like the back looks like, but I just like to walk around with the front opening and I might just do this with panties, just just this and my panties on in the house. But um, I, the bandage can't come off for three weeks, so I'm not gonna try to peek. I'm not gonna try to see anything um, because I don't want to be sad. I don't want to feel defeated. I don't want to feel anxiety or whatever when it comes to my breast. I do have, I am supposed to go to a doctor's appointment next week. Oh, I do have to look. Well, they said keep the bandage on for three weeks. I don't know if I can look at it because I wasn't given like any other spare bandage packaging, whatever. So I don't know if I can peek and look at it just to make sure that everything is okay. My anxiety wants me to because it's like I have to look. I have to make sure now that that stuff happened previously. It's like I need to make sure that if it don't look right that I got to go back. But I believe I do have an appointment next week. So I should be fine. Yeah. Ooh, girl. Gotta sit down. Gotta sit down. Um, yeah, I'm about to have some of this Panera soup. Chicken soup. And I want a nice tall cup of ginger ale. I want a nice tall cup of Canada Dry because that's what I want. Please tell me I got a cup in reach. I don't have a cup that's in reach. And I don't know what my son did with his step stool. Well, it's really the house of step store, but he's claimed it as his territory. I'm happy it went great. I was told that I was asleep for an hour, hour and a half. They, she was like, they gave you something extra because she knew she knew you were nervous. All I know, date of birth and stuff that they asked me or whatever. Um, nothing but beautiful women in there. I felt secure and seen in there because it was women. I had my previous surgery. Men. It was just 
like all men and one woman and then this one i believe it was all women and i've seen my surgeon and i haven't seen her in a while she is pregnant expecting a boy so that was the only boy in the room was that so just to have them understand and they felt bad they felt bad like they felt bad because a lot of them a lot of them they was like dr slater was like you know do you mind showing them the video of your breast and i did and they all were like gasping like one girl was just like i'm so sorry she was like i've never seen that she's like in all of my years of nursing i've never seen that and i was just like yes yeah. so i said i'm so sorry that like y'all i'm so anxious and i and i keep telling y'all don't put me to sleep yet don't put me to sleep yet don't put me to sleep yet because i'm just like are you sure you're gonna be able to do a good job because that complication was a complication on the list for this as well for this surgery as well so it's just like you know they were so sweet and so kind to me so that's just really what i needed i just needed somebody to be kind and gentle to me so i really appreciate that and so y'all pray for me because i ain't seen it i ain't seen nothing i woke up wrapped i woke up wrapped that was the first surgery of the day so they really got me in and out and she was like i wanted her as my first surgery of the day because i don't want her anxiously waiting around i wanted her to basically wake up in the morning wake up in the morning at home get dressed come here and just get the thing going and he was like because i don't want her to get scared out of not having her surgery so shout out to my surgeon for like really caring and really taking into consideration my feelings like i wholeheartedly really really appreciate that and so when i do have my um follow-up appointment i'm gonna make sure to get her a baby shower gift she's due in december and she already has one boy but i'm gonna make sure to get her um something else um for her new baby so i really appreciate that um and get her some postpartum mommy stuff um but yes yeah, y'all i'm about to take my first sip of the day and i gotta pee because i think i had an IV in me um but yes you guys i love y'all thank y'all for rocking with me i'm trying to see if i'm gonna end this now or if I'm going to hang on to this footage until I have my until I have my um, follow up appointment, I will. I will hold on to this until no, 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 no. I will check. I'm gonna actually just check back in with y'all later once the anesthesia and all that stuff to wear off and I eat something and everything, so I can kind of go through a little bit of that. So yeah, y'all. I will call y'all back later. Your eyes on me. Get it, don't be timid when you win it, by that Love a bone, give a long, leave it I don't want no kid, baby, spread it like it's when it's over It's like it, baby, double bonus I guess that's why you like it, baby, come and get this